Greetings, everybody. I'm happy you're here on this Monday. 2 p.m. is going to be my new time for Monday um, Facebook Lives. I forgot to change it on my little thingy here, but that's okay. I'll change, I'll put up a new host code and information card for February. But I'm glad you're here since I made this time change to 2 p.m. on Mondays. It's just this time is working out better for me in terms of the social media training I'm doing um, in a group that I'm in. We meet at 1130 on Mondays. Um, and then I'm also doing an extra training um, with that same group on team building. And we are going to be meeting every day this week at 3. So um, this 2 p.m. time works out great. So welcome to Stamp in Peace with Mary Nabe. Uh, happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. Um, my weekend was pretty good. Um, Friday was just a little, needed a little downtime in the evening. Well, last week in general I did. Physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, so I... I took some time for some self-care and I'm just I'm putting out a plug for all of you. Um, if you're feeling like that, please take some time for yourself. Um, I was listening to something on the Today Show this morning and they talked about how we schedule everything, but we don't schedule self-care. And I thought, that's really, that's really good. That's critical that we take breaks um, and do some things for ourselves to sort of recharge our batteries. So I did a lot of that last week, which put me a little behind on my work, but I guess that's okay since I had worked through the weekend before. Um, Saturday, Andrea and John were here. We went through some wedding things. Um, they got me a ring doorbell for Christmas, so John installed that. Um, I should say they did it together. Um, put in some smart outlets for me, did a few things like that. And my sister and brother-in-law stopped over, and then they all left, and I watched football. Um, and that was just, you know, fun. Um, and um, yes, the Bengals won, um, but it was exciting. And I went to dinner yesterday with my next-door neighbors. Kathy and John invited me to go out to dinner with them at local cantina, so we did that. And I really had a nice time. Um, just we laughed, we talked, just it was nice. And then I came home and I watched um, the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs game. I am not an NFL follower. I, you know, will sometimes follow the Browns because I grew up there in the Cleveland area. And my future son-in-law is a big Browns fan, having grown up fairly close to Cleveland. Um, I lived in Cincinnati for 17 years, so I kind of follow the Bengals, and, but I don't follow football that closely. But I also know that um, one of my littles, Ben, his favorite team is the Kansas City Chiefs. So I was kind of excited for him yesterday, although I'm sure being eight years old, he did not get to stay up to watch. So I would be highly surprised if he got to stay up to watch the whole game, but I'm sure they at least recorded it so he could watch. So now I'm super excited because the Bengals and the Chiefs play next weekend. Um, so I got to call my little buddy Ben and um, discuss the game with him. But anyways, I had a good weekend. I feel relaxed, rested, rejuvenated. And I'm ready to have a very good, very productive week. Um, I first want to mention before we get in today's project, which you're going to love, um, I do want to mention that my latest class to go was announced yesterday. And this is featuring the Blessings of Home bundle, the stamp set, and the dies. People who purchase option one will, will get the bundle, plus um, everybody that purchases options one and two will get the classic Mac dots. And then with the class, you're going to make six different cards. All right. Six different cards. Um, they're really just warm and fun and um, comforting messages, pretty colors, just 
full of lots of good things happening on all of those. So like I said, registration opened for this yesterday. Please check out that information on my blog, stampinpeace.com. It also was sent out in an email and um, registration for that is now through February 1st, okay? February, it's hard to believe we're at the end of January, but registration for the Blessings of Home class to go is open through February 1st, um, and I'm busy working on other classes to go as well. So that's always the most exciting part, other than meeting with you all. Um, the people are my first love in this job. My second is designing. Um, so I've been doing lots and lots of that's. Oh, Lisa, I'm sorry that your bill's lost, but what a game. Yes, who would have thought? It was crazy back and forth. It was really an exciting game to watch, even if you aren't, um, weren't cheering for any particular team or you're not a football follower. It's been a really great weekend for football. All righty. Um, Sue, thank you for sharing. I appreciate that so much. I'm going to flip my camera around now so that we can um, get going on today's project. And while I do that, I would appreciate it very much if you too would share this live video. Um, being that we are full force into our celebration promotion, you know, our biggest annual promotion of the year, I once again am featuring, oh, I should have cleaned my craft spot, huh? Oh, well, if it were always clean, you would think I never did anything here. <laughs> but I did want to feature once again a celebration freebie, and this time I chose to use the Calming Camellia stamp set. This is one that people can get free when they place an order or gather orders from their family and friends, and the total reaches at least $300 in sales. Um, so if you want to host or you have a long list and you want to shop and sales reach $300, you will get this beautiful Calming Camellia stamp set free. So this is um, the first projects that I'm showing with this. I also pulled in this pretty soft succulent satin ribbon from our mini catalog. I'm using... Um, this isn't something I pull out very often, but I'm and I'm actually just using the white watercolor pencil uh, for today's project as well. And then finally, I'm pulling in some soft succulent uh, designer series paper from the what is it 2020? I have to think 2021 to 2023 collection. So. Here is the first card. This is the first one we're going to make. We're gonna make two today, and I'll give both of these away. But this one is sort of a take on a traditional gatefold card. You know, the gatefold where we split down the middle and it opens this way. So it's a little bit of a variation on the gatefold card. I use the pretty satin ribbon as my closure, and this is the card. And then I've got something fun going on here with tone on tone. So let's make this, and then we'll also make a second card. You also know that lately I've been enjoying um, using six by six sheets of designer series paper and using these in what we call a one sheet wonder. And my goal is to use every bit of this piece of six by six paper when I make these two cards. So lots and lots of fun. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut my designer series paper at four inches. I'm going to save this piece for my second card. That two inch by six inch strip will be used for the second card. In fact, I'll just stick it in the envelope now. And then I'm going to turn this one and cut it at five and a quarter inches. And I'm going to use both of these pieces on this fun fold card. With, oops, I need one more cut. With this, we're gonna backtrack just a little bit. 
My finish card is a two size. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half inches finished. So I've started with five and a half by eight and a half inches of soft succulent cardstock. I'm gonna score at three inches on one end. And then on the other end, and I'm using the right side here, I'm going to score at one and a quarter inches on the other end. So three inches from one end and one and a quarter from the opposite end. I'm going to use this piece of designer series paper for both flaps on the front of that fun fold card. So I'm going to cut this Oh, and let me double check. I didn't have this written down, so I want to double check, right? Cut first measure once. Okay. I had it right, but I wanted to double check. So I'm cutting at two and seven eighths. Remember, this is four by five and a quarter. I'm cutting at two and seven eighths inch. And... So now I have all three of these pieces that I'm going to use for my version of the gatefold card. One thing I wanna mention about the gatefold cards is sometimes I'm making gatefold cards and the these edges don't match up exactly right. Maybe one overlaps a little bit or there's a little space between and I figured out a way to not let that happen, to make sure they line up really well. So now, before I burnish my folds, I put those edges together as if they're one flat piece, and then I burnish each of the folds that way. You can see this one, I have more of a curve to it. So I'm gonna push my bone folder out, and now, it just matches up really nicely, and I'm not gonna have any kind of gap in there. I don't know about you, but if I close my gatefold card and I see that white gap from the inside, it kind of bothers me. <laughs> Maybe silly, but you know, if we're gonna make the time and effort to make something handmade, let's make it nice by paying attention to those kinds of details. Now this four inch by three quarter inch strip I'm going to use on this piece of white cardstock for the inside of my card. And of course, the inside layer measures five and a quarter by four inches for an A2 size card. And these pieces of designer series paper I'm going to adhere to the front flaps. Now here I'm doing something different. Normally you, you, you see me uh, center the piece so that I have an even border all the way around. I'm going to pretend, I'm gonna lower this just a tiny bit. Let's see how that does. That's a little better, a little closer. I'm going to actually put each of these designer series papers along the gatefold edge. So I'm pulling away from the fold, having the DSP edge line up with the card, card stock edge, and then I have equal spacing top, bottom, and on the fold side. And I'm going to do the same thing with the small flap. Take that DSP all the way to the inside edge of that small flap. So now when I close both of my flaps, it actually looks like that one piece of DSP without any break in the metal. You can do it either way. You've seen me make the gatefold cards. In fact, I did one last week um, with the New Horizons DSP and I had a a break between the two pieces of DSP. Today I'm doing it a little differently. I'm gonna set this aside for now. And now I'm going to bring in some 
um, soft, more soft suede, no, soft succulent cardstock. And this one measures, again, let me double check, three and a quarter inches by four inches. Three and a quarter inches by four inches. And I chose that size because it's going to fit this. Now I feel like I got too close. I just can't get this quite right today. trying to get closer. I got too close. Maybe I should have just left it alone, huh? <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm going to ink this up. Now, recently somebody um, was borrowing ink pad from me and she had a very large stamp she wanted to ink up. And she said to me, oh, Mary, that, what do I do? That ink pad's not, uh, the stamp pad's not big enough for the stamp. And I said, it's not a problem. And hers was larger than this, actually. And I just showed her that if you get to where you feel it's so much bigger than your ink pad, put your stamp block down flat, obviously with the stamp side up, and just tap your ink pad on to your stamp this way. So obviously you can see I'm going for a real tone on tone look here, but I'm going to throw in a little bit of a twist here. I'm going to now take my white watercolor pencil. These are, these come in sets. We have two sets of assorted watercolor pencils. Um, I believe the one set has 12 in, and the other set has maybe eight different colors. Um, but I'm just using the white, and those are in, the watercolor pencils are actually in the annual catalog. But now I'm just gonna add some soft highlights to the stamped image. Just using my watercolor pencil and I'm not even going to watercolor with it. I'm just going to do a little coloring. And you wanna think of this white pencil as just adding um, some brightness. So you still get the whole tone on tone effect, but it just brightens up certain areas of the stamped image. And I would say don't do it all. You don't want to go over every single leaf and stem and detail. Um, and you don't want to fill in those petals entirely. You can see it's a really quick and easy process. Anybody can do this. Of course, I think anybody can be a stamper. Sometimes people say, oh, I'm not creative, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no. Please don't tell me that. Everybody can be a stamper. Um, I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more right up here, I think. So, you know, finish, take a look, hold it out. But do you see the difference? Here's one I did earlier, okay? So I stamped, let me show that. Um, but then I added some brightness. So it really does change the look. Oh, by the way, somebody, I wrote this number down. Somebody earlier asked, how close am I to my um, milestone of reaching $400,000 in career sales? I am um, $1,597.48 away as of today, January 24th. So I'm getting closer. My goal is to get there by the end of January. Um, I'm super excited. Um, never did I think I would achieve something like this, but it, it's fun and it's neat to be able to work towards a goal as well. So thank you. I don't remember who asked that, but thank you for asking. So now I'm going to mount this on basic white. And I just want went an eighth of an inch larger 
on this. And when I post this video to my blog this week, I will have all of the cutting and scoring dimensions written out there for you. Of course, you can always review the video right here on Facebook on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nave. Now I'm ready to um, adhere this to my front. However, if you are going to use, and you don't necessarily have to have the ribbon closure, I think it just makes a nice, um, I don't know, it's just a nice elegant way to finish off this card. So if you do want to use the ribbon closure, you are going to want to use that ribbon, adhere the ribbon, cut it, whatever, first, okay? Before you adhere the layers to the front. And uh, you saw, I didn't even measure this out. I kind of just winged it. Um, I know that I want it to close. Now this ribbon, oh, and I cut this a little too long, really. Um, but this ribbon is a little, I mean, it's not terribly thick, but it is sturdy. So if you're mailing this card, I would probably suggest just using a knot instead of a bow for this. Um, because again, you don't want it to be, I'm gonna change this a little bit, so maybe I can use the excess for something else. So you don't want it to be too bulky. So um, so that's why I suggest just doing a knot for the closure and not a bow. I'm just doing a simple, what do you call it? I don't know, square knot, is that what it's called? Double knot. Give it a good tug. Of course, you want to tie this only after you've inserted your um, inside piece to the card. So if you're gonna do some stamping, you still wanna add something, do it before you close this off with the ribbon and knot. And then I'm ready to add this. Now I'm going to add my layers with Stampin' Dimensionals. Be careful that you keep your adhesives on the big left flap only, all right? And the reason for that is we don't want to stick the adhesive to the other side and have this holding the card closed. That kind of defeats the purpose of the gatefold, right? And the, so the reason I did this is I know now that my dimensionals are not going to inhibit um, the opening and closing of this. They're right where they need to be. I'm also going to add one more dimensional in the center and this is basically just going to hold that piece of ribbon in place so it's not sliding around too much you just want to center this on the front top and bottom and I say center it because it is taking up most of the space of the front. If it were something smaller, you might want to put it off center, one direction or the other. And now, as you can see, I kind of have this empty space here. And this is where I want to fill in with um, a sentiment. And I've chose this one today. You are in my thoughts today. I um, learned yesterday that a friend of mine, and um, she spent was on my team quite some time ago, um, she just lost her husband to COVID this weekend. So I wanna reach out to her and send her a card. So this is the one I've, 
uh, sentiment I've chosen for that reason. So I'm going to stamp it with soft succulent. And then I'll punch it with our label, la label me fancy punch. And, oops, I'm just gonna put a couple of small mini dimensionals on the back. Kind of offsetting that a little bit, which I like. And then my final touch for this will be to add some of the in, oops, I have some out here, in color rhinestones. So I'm gonna grab my take your pick tool and I'm just gonna add, try and decide where I want them. I think I'll add two up in this corner. And then I'm gonna add one about over here. You know when you're adding dimensionals, or not dimensionals, embellishments, you want to work in threes. Three, five, okay? Um, it's just one of those um, decor elements that says odd numbers are more pleasing to the eye. So there is my finished card. What do you think? I love how it turned out. And you know, it's really got that um, simple and elegant look to it. Connie, the knot is um, for your recipient to open. So you don't actually want to close this. You don't want to um, tie the knot in the ribbon until after you've stamped, you've written your message, whatever on the inside, and then close it off. So it's just kind of an extra fun surprise for the recipient of your card. They're gonna be, oh, that's beautiful. And then they're going to untie the knot and open up the card and read your message inside, okay? So that will actually be the very last thing you do before you send your card after you've written your message, all righty? Now, moving on to the second card. We still have this two inch by six inch piece of DSP left. And I've got a standard size card base. Again, five and a half by eight and a half inches. And this one I scored as we usually do right down the center at four and a quarter inches. I've got white for the inside. Standard again, five and a quarter, four inches for the inside. And now I'm ready to build my card. This is a little bit long, obviously. My card's only five and a half inches wide. So I'm cutting the strip to the same width, five and a half inches. And I'll also use that little two inch by half inch strip on this card. I'm going to add this, and this will be a horizontal card. I'm going to put this right across the center of my card front. And then I've got, um, oh, and let me check, two, da, 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 two and three quarters. Yes, two and three quarters by two inch for stamping. But before I do that, I'm actually going to stamp a sentiment right here. And I'm actually going to lay this piece of cardstock right there because that's going to be where um, my stamped focal point is going to be. But I want to stamp right directly onto my card base. And I'm actually going to use this one, You Make Me Smile. I thought this was, you know, there are so many reasons to use this one. My girls make me smile all the time. Um, 
it's a great way to send a thank you note. Somebody did something kind for you and it made you smile, made you happy. Perfect sentiment for a, a twist on a thank you card. Now I'm going to stamp another image from our Calming Camellia stamp set. Again, I'm doing that kind of tone on tone. Um, technique and I'm also going to add some highlights with my white watercolor pencil. And again, I'm using this for highlights, so I don't want to um, color in everything. I think that's pretty good. Just gives it a little bit brighter look without losing the tone-on-tone um, -tone look. So I'll adhere this to my white. So two and three quarter inches by two inch for the soft succulent, and then two and seven eighths inch by two and an eighth for the white. Now, I know you're still thinking, Mary, you've still got that little half inch strip. What are you going to do with that? I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to actually seal it shut with a little bit of adhesive. And then I'm going to adhere it so it just goes right under here, just a tad bit. So I'm actually using it like a little embellishment. And you can decide how, how much of it you want to stick out. There's more of it. There's less of it. I'm going to go down about this far. And to draw attention to this just a little bit more, I'm going to use one of my uh, in color rhinestones. And there it's all finished. So we had a lot happening with these two cards. Oh, I thought of one more thing I we need to do. Because, you know, there's there really are some very great sentiments in here. I know that I will use, oh, I love those hearts. Thanks so much. I'm glad you love the cards today. Um, there are really lots of great sentiments. I see myself using all of these very often. So it's a great set to own. But one thing I didn't consider is um, this little swirly thing. And as I was creating this, I thought, you know, I could have done some swirls on the background or maybe just along the top here. But since my cards are complete, I'm going to use that swirl on the front of the envelopes. I always feel good if I um, can use every stamp in the set in one way or another. Not necessarily all at the same time or on the same card, um, but just generally speaking. I'm not sure how I wanna do this. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go this way for one. And then on the other envelope, I think I'll actually stamp the flap. And I'm going to go one this direction, oops. Darn, I got that little halo thing going. And then I'm gonna go the other direction, like that. Oh, minus my little boo-boo there. But that just is kind of fun. You could also do something along 
the left side of your envelope like this. Go right down. You know what I see here too? Um, I see like antenna for a butterfly. You know, some of our larger butterfly stamps. I see that as kind of being antenna. Isn't that fun? Okay, so there you have it. Um, Calming Camellia stamp set, yours free with either a $300 order. I know that's a lot, but you don't have to do that by yourself. You can collect orders from your family and friends, other crafters that you know, um, or you can have a um, host a party, a Stampin' Up! party. And I can do that with you either virtually or in person. And um, we have till the end of February to do that so you can get the stamps stamp set when your totals reach $300 or more. So I hope you love the cards today. Um, I enjoyed spending some time with you and sharing what I truly love to do. So thanks for being here today. If you're interested in winning one of these two cards, please type in the comments now, Calming Camellia. All right. Everybody who types in the comments right now, Calming Camellia, your name will be entered uh, into a drawing to receive one of these cards. I hope too that you might take a look at um, pulling out your watercolor pencils and using the white one or any, actually any light color. You can kind of um, mix and match and try different color watercolor pencils on different colors of cardstock because that's really fun to do. I did that a long time ago with um, some fall colors. I embossed leaves in gold and then I colored with various fall colors of watercolor pencils on a card base of Rich Razzleberry. And I wish I had it to show you, but it's been a few years. Um, so obviously that card has come and gone, been sent off to um, make somebody else happy. But so experiment with your watercolor pencils. And again, you don't have to add water. You can just color with them. And if you don't own the watercolor pencils, um, consider purchasing them. They're a small investment to add a lot of fun to your stamping and paper crafting. And those can be found in the annual catalog. All right, everybody, have a great day. Um, and I will plan to see you on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Thanks for joining me. And I hope to see you back here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe very soon. Bye-bye.